Right, pal. So I'm back from Cardiff for about three days. All we've been up to so far has been we've we've moved the boat because we were all dying from the hay fever working inside in the field with the long grass. We've had a look at the, the mast, the sails, the boom, and um, we've just been taking inventory, seeing what we've got, seeing what we need to buy. So this is the rig as it is right now. Um, we've done a few bits and pieces on it, so I'll give you a quick run through. Um, we've attached our backstay. Um, the mechanism on the end is still up for discussion. We're going to figure out how it goes. This is our spinnaker halyard. Um, I was wondering what this roller here was for, and I had a chat with Reese about it. He said basically, if you've got a halyard coming more than 10 degrees out of the mast, it rolls up in itself when you're hoisting it. So this roller stops that problem occurring. Below that we've got two jib halyards coming all the way down to the end. Um, one's a spare, one's going to be used. Uh, two shrouds coming out down through the spreaders and they'll be attached to the deck. This is going to be a spinner pole up haul by the looks of things. Haven't fully sorted that out yet. Shrouds are attached to the spreaders. They're good to go, we just have a small bit of riveting to be done on this side. Two more shrouds. We're keeping it all neat with pieces of string. This is our track for our spinnaker pole. It needs to be oiled up I'd say. All of us, our three halyards are attached here. They're coming out of the foot of the mast here. So what I'm missing is the main halyard which wasn't mouse when it was taken out which is going to cause a bit of trouble. I think we're going to have to figure out a way to get the, the main halyard through the mast. The foot of the mast has a slight crack in it and it needs a bolt as well to go through when we're stepping it. So there is a bit of riveting and a bit of metal work to be done in this mast before we sail it. The whole boat only has one through hull and uh, I want to get rid of it. So <laughs> Wait. there's no need to have a hole in the hull if if you can avoid it, we're going to get rid of it, so uh, there's going to be a fiberglass job to cover up that hole before we paint it and before we anti-foul it. Um, I've got half a tin of primer here that was gifted to me by Sir Simon and half a tin of half a tin of anti-foul, which is more like tarmac at this stage, I'd say, which will mix with the other two half tins that I've got there. So I'd say now this will be the most multiracial <laughs> <laughs> anti foul job so um i snuck into the house and robbed my mother's hair dryer to uh, to peel frantic off the side of it and then I went over it with a quick sand and um, I'm thinking actually this evening I might do a quick draft. I'm, I'm thinking of hand painting Frantic back onto it once it's painted. But before the paint goes on it'll be handy to do a quick, dra quick draft. I'm here trying to record a video and he's trying to cut the grass. <laughs> Much better. Come on. <laughs> So, because it's far too expensive to go into Chandlery and buy marine paint, uh, we've gone to DNC Motor Factors and Turner's Cross and Cork, and then um, we picked up a big tin of thinner. This is our paint, black, because it was cheap, and this is our U-Pol, so that's going to be a high build filler. So we'll, I think I'll just anti-foul the hull straight on, and I'll put filler above the waterline, paint it, and obviously the tinner will tin it down for when we're applying it. We're looking at covering up the boat, I'd say, to spray it. Hopefully in the next couple of days while the, while the weather's nice. So uh, thanks Declan. I'd just like to give a massive shout out and a thank you to the lads in Force 4 Chandlery Cardiff. They're for sorting me out with a personal leap herb, this flare kit and this life jacket. And they've after given me a load of advice about my trip as well that I'm planning. So um massive thank you to those lads. Another guy I was sailing with over in Cardiff 
is after giving me a GPS chart plotter from Garmin. Um, he gave that to me for free just out of the kindness of his heart. Absolute gent. And um, a massive thank you to Simon Barry in Cardiff. Um, of course then, the man who it wouldn't have happened without is uh, Reese. <laughs> again. So uh, thanks again Reese. <laughs> I'll, I'll be thanking you in every video. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and God bless and all that. Hello? Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Strictly come dancing? Can't do it. 